Top 15 Best Advice to Medical Students Number 15 What's your dream job? What do you want to do when you grow up? Uh, I'm going to be a doctor. Yeah? How much do you want to make? I'm going to make people feel okay. Number 14 I don't think you should become a doctor if you're doing it just for the fame and the glory or just the egocentric, you know, I'm a doctor. You definitely should, don't go to medical school. Don't waste your time. I also don't think that you should be a doctor Number for money. 13. I think that you can make a lot more money doing something else that's not so egotistically driven. But I think the only people that should be doctors are the people who truly want to help other humans. Number 13. Five mistakes I made in college so you don't have to. Don't skip class. It's college, so you can get away with it. The problem is once you skip once, you'll start doing it a lot more. Pretty soon you'll be cramming before an exam, wishing you had the material and wishing you went to class. Number two, don't try to get through your classes alone. Putting in that little bit of effort to just say hi to the person next to you on the first day of class can give you a study buddy for the rest of the semester. Going solo won't just be an incredibly isolating feeling, it'll actually lower your GPA. Number three, don't pick bad professors. Which professor you get will determine your understanding the material and your GPA. Don't pick randomly. Number four, don't forget why you're there, to get a good job. Internships won't just fall into your lap. You have to put in concerted effort to start building your career during college. Number five, I didn't figure out till sophomore year. Don't be boring. Nobody likes the dude who does nothing but study for all four years. Have experiences, have fun. College only happens once. Number 12. Honestly, my advice to medical students is don't let medicine take over your life. We need doctors that are human beings that have got some real life experience. We, we don't need walking encyclopedias that can just tell you about every single condition. We need to be able to communicate with people. And the only way to do that is keep up your hobbies, uh, make lots of friends at university, get a part-time job, learn the value of money. And um, yeah, study smart. Don't study long hours just for the sake of it. Have a plan and um, yeah, enjoy the ride. It's hard work, but it's rewarding in the end and um, don't put too much pressure on yourself. If you do the right amount of work, you'll pass the exams, but you gotta enjoy the process. It goes by in a flash, and the next thing you know, you're 14 years qualified, you think, where's the time gone? So just enjoy it. Number 11. What I wish I knew in first year. So first year is gonna be the year that you learn how to learn. You are gonna to have to get used to learning in a new way and you're gonna to have to try a whole host of study methods. And I really recommend you try all of these as soon as possible. Try the flashcards, the mnemonics, the posters, the mind maps, try it all and see what works best for you. What is helping you retain the most knowledge? Unpopular opinion as well, but actually probably getting more popular these days is that you do not have to attend every lecture, but you do need an understanding of what's going on. And what I mean by this is that if there was a seminar on a topic and I hadn't gone over the lecture for that topic, I would watch that lecture, answer the worksheet or the work in advance for that seminar and go and see what other people's answers were, try and contribute to the discussion and basically discuss really difficult concepts because you will take something away from that seminar. And something I personally found useful is attending things that were practical. I go to a medical school that did human um, cadaver dissection and Trust me, when you're dissecting a dead body, you never forget it. Number 10. Medical school will humble you. If you thought you were smart before, forget about it. I remember like growing up in primary school, secondary school, I used to think I was kind of clever, you know, because like I would do well in tests and exams and stuff like that. You get so used to being the smart one amongst your school or whatever space you're in. And then all of a sudden you're thrown into this pool full of flipping geniuses. And all of a sudden what you called smart is now below average, if even that, do you know what I mean? Like, like just think about it like this, you're used to getting A's or B's and stuff like that and you're so happy with that and now all of a sudden you're putting in the exact same amount of effort the exact same effort or even more and you're getting C's or D's 
and it's like wait a second what's happening here it's a whole different ball game and people don't talk about it enough honestly speaking i think that's one of the biggest adjustments in med school that people don't talk about the way you see yourself begins to change and that's where the imposter syndrome can really really come in because all of a sudden you're pushed into this place full of some of the smartest people you will ever ever meet and unless you're really really secure in yourself and especially if academic validation is not everything to you you will struggle like you will definitely struggle and i definitely found that I struggled a lot. What I was averaging in my undergrad or what I was averaging in secondary school is extremely different to what I average in med school and that is a hit and it's something that you should prepare for. Number nine. I'm not even gonna joke with you guys. When you first started to learn anatomy, I looked at that thing, I was like, there's no way in hell I'm gonna learn this. And it was one of my worst topics. I hated anatomy so much. Then when I started to understand it a bit more, it actually became one of my favorite topics like that and cardiovascular system so the one of the main reasons that really helped me improve was i took my time with it so i didn't cram anatomy if you cram anatomy you're going to find it really hard so definitely give yourself a few months to look at the structure of things how things work the muscles how they move and stuff like that i would also recommend um especially for the shoulder anatomy and the movements definitely do quizzes of these movements like flexion extension all of those things because it can be hard to remember also look at the origin of these anatomical names because sometimes it can really make sense if you look at the origin number eight it may take you twice as long you may have to take courses and classes you might not read as fast you might not move as quick you might not have as much but don't you quit don't you give up on your dream don't you do it don't you do it don't you do it number seven so much easier to recognize other people's wins and not your own be kinder to yourself be nice to yourself because those words stick the words that you actually say to yourself are so detrimental to your self-esteem number six my words so bright it's hard to breathe but that's all right Hush. Hi, Ruben here and welcome to Anatomy Movement, where anatomy becomes funatomy. We have summarized and detailed notes, acronyms, HD images to build your photographic memory, X-rays images, tabled notes and questions and answers at the end of each video to help you remember all that we have learned. If you would like to know the top 5 best advice and learn from our videos as well then hit that subscribe button and comment on which advice caught you so far.